Okay, so side cutters are your other tool. There's a kind of electrical side cutters and they take rivets out. So I sort them out in front of me. I keep my straight ones there and my bent ones up there. And uh, now I peel back the upper. And there's my lining. So I'm just going to lay down my lining. So if I get too much tension, it creates a drum there. And then I, so I don't want to pull, I want to pull it, just get it to lie down. And then make sure that the lining's going to lie down. Get those first three in. Make sure the upper takes on that saddle shape. This is stuff that's all really difficult to do if you're working on a peg. See, I can keep checking it, looking at it, and um, making sure it's going to fit really well. See, there's the tip of my stiffener from the lateral side and on the medial side, lying just where I want them to lie. Um, so the next thing I do is I just split that one, the rivet in there. Just leave the rivet standing up and split that. just to make sure it doesn't move around. Okay, then I'm, what I now have to do is get these creases out. So, just, uh, yeah, okay, I'll just come closer so you look down there. So, I've got all this bulk that has the potential to be very, very creased. So by, but I only need to get it flat on the, this first six millimeters. So I pull it around put a rivet in, pull it around, pulling down, just sort of wiggle it around because leather is organic material, it gradually settle in. See I've just got it so there's no crease, put a rivet in, bring the next round, there's a bit of crease, pull it, lay it down, move it, there's no crease, put a rivet in. The next bit, Get it, lay it down, move it around, pull it, there's no crease, pull a rivet in. It's a really felt, you know, you, you get a feeling for it, it becomes almost innate. Just about do it in the dark. In fact, Tommy Simons, one of the guys I learned from, he was virtually, well, he was registered blind when I was learning from him. He still made the most exquisite job of lasting up. Okay, so I'll lay that down. I want to make sure I get the other side done because I don't want to put a twist in the whole thing. So again, now I'm working with the toe up towards me. So pull it. Just see how I could get a crease there. I don't want that. I want it so that crease just disappears. I put the rivet in and then I can get the next little bit there crease has disappeared. See how I'm just walking it around so each little crease becomes so small that it, it it's taken up by compression sideways in the leather instead of standing up like a little hill or a ridge. They're, they're all out now, the whole thing is flat. And two or three in here just to hold them down. And do that side. And when you're running on a straight, you don't need nearly as many rivets. Okay, so there's I've got all this excess skirt on. If you're, uh, um, particularly if you're doing a big run, you know, the, the patterns would be cut so you didn't ne have nearly as much skirt because that's quite a lot of leather to waste. But when you're doing a one-off, it's better to have the, 
extra leather because you don't know how much it's all going to stretch. See, so I'm just uh, cutting it, just leaving. Leaving about eight mil, so I can turn that up. And again, neoprene under there. If this was a uh, toluene based, you know, the standard stuff, I'd be uh, floating around looking down on myself from the ceiling by now, but this stuff has uh, <clears throat> done all kinds of research to find a solvent that worked with these glues that didn't uh, take you off to cloud cuckoo land, and this is what they've come up with, and it's, it's quite good. Right, okay, so I've got the, um, the glue in there, heat gun to heat it up and reactivate it. And then just uh, lay it down with, with the lining, just about lay the whole thing down with the heel of the uh, uh, flat knife. Yeah. Take the rivets out. A lot of these I'll be able to reuse. Now they're not making steel in the red car anymore, we might run out of steel, so. It's a bent one. Okay, and then lay it down. I'll just uh, trim that a bit better. And just finish with a couple of rivets. Hold it down. I don't want to have a lot of tension on the, the lining at the toe because I don't want it pulling away from the toe puff. Okay, okay so that's lying down nice and flat. And there's the uh, upper. Obviously I could pull the upper down over it, but the next stage is to put the toe puff on. Okay, so here's one I made earlier. So again, this is cut from belly leather. And what we do with our toe puffs is we just have standard patterns that we cut out a lot of. This is a, a men's, or a large, a large one anyway, large ladies' men's. And it's, I um, want to come back about <coughs> the two and three eighths, which is about 60, on him maybe 62 mil. Just remember whatever you do, do it the same on the other. If you come too far back with the toe puff, the crease, see that the toe puff doesn't crease, the, see with the, the toe puff doesn't crease, the crease happens behind it. If you come too far back you'll throw a crease on top of the big toe. If, you, if you're too short, then you, uh, it's better to be air on the short side because if you're too long you can actually get the, the toe puff cutting, cutting into the big toe itself. 
Um, but if you're too short, obviously you, you don't have enough toe power. So it's a r around 60, 62 for a, um, a, a fairly good size, but this is a size 10 man's shoe, down to maybe 50, 55 for a, a small, small lady's shoe. Yeah. Small men's shoe. It's just the size. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to scythe the, uh, just in the same way I did the uh, stiffener, I'm going to scythe the toe puff flat. Get a nice flat surface. So it's a, a smooth gradient from there to there. It's a nice straight gradient. Um, so what I don't want to do is when I'm finished, pull the last out. I don't want to have, like with a plastic toe puff, sometimes the toe puff ends, and then you just have a lining. and you can actually see a ridge where the, you know, where the, the toe puff ends, and there's a clear distinction. Because this is leather, it can be fine, um, finely skived, so that it tails away literally to nothing. And so, you, you know, if you're careful how you do it, you make the edge of the toe puff indiscernible as to where it begins and where it doesn't. Okay, so that's that. Put it on, stretch it into place. Stretch it right round, right round, right round. This is way too big. <laughs> I'm just tapping it on where the corners are. And that leaves me with the feather line. So that's the feather line of the, the shoe. Then I'm going to add about a centimeter, eight mil to a centimeter. And I literally cut it out. Really, I should have a cutting board, <laughs> but I'm being really careful. Okay. Yeah. So you'll have a long, long piece of wood sitting around for doing. By the way, when I was when I was apprentice, when I was learning, there was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys working in a room uh, from here to there. This is in Soho, and about a width. Of, yeah. A room about the size of the space we're working in. Eight guys making their living doing the entire lot on, uh, in the middle of Soho. Okay, so there's my stiffener, my toe puff. Now I want to do the same kind of U-shaped. I want it to be full thickness there, come down quite sharply, and then smooth out. So it's coming down and then smoothing out. Down and then smoothing out. So it's got a large, thin surface to bond, but the it's thick right up against the edge, the full thickness. See, so what happens is, as it comes over, it's full thickness right there, and then there's this nice flat thing to bond it with. Okay, so this uh, should be dry by now. Take the bent rivets out. So I've got a really nice sharp feather line. The other good thing about a, a leather stiffener is you can fine tune the shape of the, the toe shape. You can knock it about, um, particularly when it's mellow, until they both look identical. Okay, so I've, here's my paste and the paste brush. So this is the uh, shoemaker's paste again. Put it on the area where the toe puffs to go. And then bit on the toe puff itself. And then stretch it in place. Okay, lay it over. 
and then get lots of paste on here. This, this we want to do with paste rather than, because we'll let this dry now, we'll do this with paste rather than uh, neoprene because it's wet and yeah, basically because it's soaking wet and paste works much better. And also, um, while it's wet, we should be able to lay it down with very few rivets. Okay, so. Trouble with reusing rivets, they got neoprene on them, they stick to each other. Okay. Just pull that there. Good, and then gradually work this over. See, so I've scarred it, even though it's uh, a good two and a half mil thick on the end, the way I've scarred it, it's all settling into place. So it's two and a half mil thick there, but it quickly comes down to about one, maybe even 0.8 to 9 mil there. There's my topa. And I begin to shape it. And there's a certain magic point uh, with leather. If it's too wet, you'll see it just um, it just takes a dent. But there's a certain point where it becomes suddenly very mellow and you can tap it and work it. Um, so just uh, watch out for that point. So normally I'd be going on to, uh, in fact I will, go to the second upper so you can see all that. You see there's the topo. So when these are dry I'll put in the side linings there and there and then we'll last the upper over. And the upper will come over like that. And if you're leaving them overnight to dry, don't, you know, so you don't get a crease in the upper, just pull them down like that and let it sit. Okay, so that, when that upper is dry, you can see with a, just a few rivets, we'll be able to get the upper to lie right down, and there's our shoe. Okay, any questions? So what I'll do is I'll do the other side now. <laughs>